Now, if you want the numbers of how many accepted, rejected, or have not responded to your meeting request, as well as identifying them individually so you can send out a special invite and say, please come and beg, you can come over here to the meeting and, like for pumpkin carving, the night before I want to go out and purchase the exact number of pumpkins for those who are attending or accepted the meeting request, as well as donuts because, you know, carving those pumpkins, that works up an appetite. And I don't want to under-purchase or over-purchase. I want to keep within the budget. To find out, up to this point, of all those who are attending or accepted, go ahead and double-click on the meeting. And it's right there, the responses, if they have responded. And that brings up a good point. So I only sent out one, and the response was tentative from Carrie. You can imagine in a scenario of, let's say, 20, if I got back five responses, and I have, like, maybe three accepted and two declined, and that's all I see, and I know I sent out 20, that means the other 15 have not responded yet. And if I want to find out exactly who accepted, then come up here on the meeting tab in the show group, and we're going to track them. Yes, click on it. And there you go. The following responses to this meeting have been received. In other words, as soon as I get it in the inbox, it automatically updates the screen here. And so for Carrie, who's an optional attendee, the response is tentative. Now, for the none, if they haven't responded, that's what you're going to see here. And for the meeting organizer, me, well, you're not going to get a response from me because I organized it. And, of course, also for the room. So that way I can find the 15 who haven't responded, the three who have accepted, and the two who haven't. And so I can get a little bit more pleading in my emails for those who haven't responded and direct it to them. And also the two who rejected to say, okay, this isn't team spirit. Everybody has to come. In any case, if they eventually do respond, but let's say they don't respond by replying to the email, maybe they lost it, or they told you over the phone, or they texted you, you can go ahead and update it manually here. So, for example, if Carrie was none, and I want to go ahead and come over here, click in the none, well, it's tentative, which brings up a good point. She can change her mind, remember? And, as we talked about in an earlier training video, she can go ahead and send another update saying, okay, it's not tentative, it's now accepted. It's not accepted, it's now declined. And she can keep going and going, and that just could drive you nuts. But in any case, you can go ahead and manually do it for her here if she calls you or texts you or, you know, you're eating lunch. And she says, oh, yeah, I'm accepting. Go ahead and update it to accepted. And you can do it as well for the optional to say, okay, now you're required. And then go ahead and save your work, close out. And then, of course, when you come back to double-click to get the tally, Instead of one tentative, now it updates to one accepted. Great, so that way you don't have to totally rely on their responses via email to have it automated here, although that would be ideal. So you don't have to go ahead and click on tracking, and you can see it keeps the changes here, and come in and do it manually. So you can do it this way. Let me go ahead and close out. Or if you got it selected here, the meeting, just come up to its related contextual meeting tab, go to the attendees group, and it's right there, tracking. And you can see the three dudes, the one with the check mark, the accepted, the X declined, of course, and the question mark is, uh, like, uh, I'm not sure. Go ahead and click on it, and it brings up the tracking window. Now, if you want the tally, you can just come up here and click on appointment, and then you can see the tally. And let's go back to tracking in any case. Let's close out of here. Oh, one last thing. You can click on the drop-down arrow and copy the status to the clipboard. What that will do is take a snapshot of everything here, so you can go ahead and open up Microsoft Word, paste it there, or in Excel. Because in Excel, when you paste, it organizes them into their proper columns, like the name column, the attendance, and the responses. Because if you do it in Microsoft Word, or if you want to go ahead and, let's close out of here, and go back to the mail folder, and double-click in a blank area, and paste it down in the body down below, it's not easily recognized by column because, well, the name is, but then the attendance floats over, and it's part of the name column. I mean, it's a mess. In any case, you can go ahead and hit the space bar a gazillion times to get these lined up just perfectly, or hit the tab key, or you can watch my word training video on tab stops, which is available here in the body of the message. If you want to come up here and click on the Format Text tab, go to the Paragraph group, click on its expandable dialog box button, and then down below you have Tabs that you can set numerically, or if you want to do it visually, like with the ruler here, well, by default, the ruler's not showing. It's up here. I added it to the quick access toolbar that if I click on it, it disappears. So go ahead and add ruler. Click on it. Then you'll be able to see it. Then, of course, you can go ahead and 
with everything selected here. Click to add your first stop. We'll do it at the, well, you see that's her name and email address. We'll have to go out to the three inch mark. And then for the next stop, click and drag that. Oh, do that again. Click and drag that over here. Got to make sure I'm on the ruler and let go. See, now we got to organize into columns. So it's left aligned to that stop and to that one right there. And it's just one tab. How do you know? Just come up here in the paragraph group on the format text tab, reveal your codes, and the arrow represents hitting the tab key once. So it goes from name to attendance. That way I don't have to hit the tab key, which is the default every five spaces to get it finally to about here. We just hit it once and it goes all the way over until it hits that stop. Once it stops, you can see in the pop-up, it aligns everything to the left. In any case, you can go ahead and watch my word training video on tab stops to learn in greater detail about how to set these. And if you want to go ahead and, as I do here, have them organized into columns with as little work as possible. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.